I call the meeting to order. A public notice having been duly given and a quorum being present. The meeting, meeting is duly constituted and the first order of business on the agenda is approval of the agenda. I would like to add three items. Uh, a letter to John Weston. Helen, you raised that. Yes. Yes. Where did um, you put that? Would that be 7B? 7B. 7B. Okay. Um, 7C, a quick discussion on the early years grant, just to bring council up to speed on it. Ron, correct? Yeah, and I have paperwork here too. Okay, That's good. also on the regular agenda, just so you're aware. Um, yeah, this That's, is more... It's bigger picture. I'm yeah. happy to do that, Mayor Burr. And uh, D, a quick discussion of the strategic plan that we've been working on. And may I add uh, E, yeah. which is corporate sponsorships. Yes, thank you. Anything else? Okay, motion to approve. Second. Um, we don't have to vote on that, right? You, you still have to vote. Okay, so all in favor? All in favor. Thank you. Opposed? Carried. So um, that's that. Item three, public participation. Ruth, is that you? Well, I came here uh, to answer any questions you have about the... Okay, so we actually have a, a, a thing under uh, 7A, so we can do it then. Yeah. Hello, Eileen. Hi. Good afternoon. From here? Yes, that's good. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm here to discuss the parcel tax that's um, on the water bills. And I'm wondering whether that is, I'm assuming it is the 600,000 and the 800,000 that we borrowed for the UV. I'll defer to Ron on this one. Yes. Okay. Um, then. I'm wondering whether the entire amount should be a parcel tax or whether a million of that should be under the regular general taxes because we saved $1 million on that, um, that whole project. So what the previous mayor has said a few times about the $1 million saving and so that shouldn't be part of a parcel tax. That amount should be in the general taxes. It makes our parcel taxes extremely high. And as I said in an email I sent, I was speaking with Helen, um, the parcel taxes are sort of unfair on the least valuable valued homes in the, uh, in the village. And I think the one million in savings ended up being spent, I think, uh, on, in Calvin Grove. They had some sort of disaster over there. And, uh, and the Lions Bay um, roads. So it should not be in a water parcel tax. It, it obviously is going to pass me tonight, but I'm just wondering if that could be investigated for next time, because it would drastically lower our parcel taxes. If it's I, can, I can give you the short answer. Absolutely. I, I want to get to this, the bottom of this no, no more than, no less than you do. Okay. And uh, yes, I have heard tell, but we will do a reconciliation on what happened to the million dollars. You know, I, I would hate to think that we, we've been borrowing a million dollars to put into the general fund. Well, so I, I doubt that happened. Apparently. I don't know. So the, 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 the short answer is thanks for, for re-bringing to our attention, because I know you raised it about 18 months ago. Um, it is the, it's a done deal now, but just because of timing, we had to in order absolutely. to get the bills up. Yes. We will get it so nailed down for next time. Uh, there will be absolutely no debate that it's the Thank fairest, you. best, most principled way of doing things. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you're doing a wonderful job. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, I mean, you know, oh, this sorry. is one of the topics I was going to bring up this evening. Are we fine with it? Uh, as I've just mentioned it now, or Carl has mentioned it now. Because we were going to bring it up in council oh, yes, as well. No, no, it, it, good. It, that, so that I'm, I'm absolutely fine. It's, uh, that I'm keeps you for now. To, good, uh, good. Okay, thank thanks, you. Eileen. Um, any other public participation? Come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Adoption of the minutes of the uh, committee of the whole council meeting of February the third. Page is that? That is page 3 of 18. Um, do we do follow-up out of the minutes now? You can do it however you like. Generally, it, it would fall under um, business arising. Business arising. Okay, yeah. good. 
Okay, I only had one, and that is um, in this particular one, the heading says council strategy meeting, but I think that's probably just a, well, this the is, nature of the package. That's right. It's yeah. the header okay. for the whole package. Okay, so that's, that's not fine. I mean, that's not a problem. And then uh, on page two, one, two, three, four, five, sixth para down, just above number six, unfinished business. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would suggest we say it has been reported that the village lose area. It's not been suggested. It's, it's well understood. The fire chief has said it many times. What do you guys say? Oh, that's not what Simon's told me. Okay, so it, it is it is somewhere between fact and rumor. So suggested is good. Okay, so if that's the case, then suggested is good. Yeah, I don't know who suggested it, but... Well, I tend to have a, a more hard-line view on it. I, I think a, a, a review of the numbers will show that we are losing money on it. So it's more than a suggestion. That's been my understanding, but I haven't seen the numbers uh, for reasons we've discussed. My understanding for... I guess the second year of last council, and this came up, there were, like, actually, t I'm sure the chief could tell us how much we're losing every time they go out. Yeah. Like, to within a buck. I would like to have it minuted that it's a lot more than a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Well, why can't, can we ask for um, a spreadsheet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we can, and we have. Specifically for, because this, for the um, highway calls, right? Actually, Mayor Brown, I put it in, in correspondence and quarterly reports for losing my its statement. Yeah. Because uh, we know what the call-out number is, what they receive. And 300 an hour, yeah. And we know what our costs are, so I mean, it, I mean I'm mean, i sure the chief could... The, the reason I would like it to be... Tell us how much we're losing. Yeah, the reason I want it to be fairly emphatic is so that we can use it as part of our discussion. It's in the minutes with uh, Moti, mm -hmm. with MOTO. It is reconciled monthly, so it would be relatively simple to pull those numbers. Okay, so we can we can um, so we can leave it like it is now, or or say it has been. I, I think we're fairly confident it's been reported. It's well understood. Yes. Right. Okay. All in favor of saying that? Okay. Fine. Let's do that. Then. Um, it has been reported. It has been reported rather than suggested. yeah, rather than it was suggested. Yeah. Thank you. So that's, uh, it's not numbers, it's just above, so I guess it's Page the last paragraph of five. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's all I had in terms of changes. Anybody else? Okay, I uh, move to adopt the minutes. Second, please. One in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Business arising? I do have a couple things to speak to okay. in the minutes. They weren't noted as action items, but they bear some reporting. Well, they may be the same as mine, so that's good. Okay, so on this... Page two, the second paragraph. Look at this. Star? Star. <laughs> I bet they're very similar. <laughs> See, you yeah, can sure, that, the stars are all the same. <laughs> that staff have, they're aligned. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the st staff have not heard yet, back yet from legal counsel. I have spoken to legal counsel. Um, the term alternates is not something that's generally accepted for committees. Having said that, um, when you appoint people to committees, they're a member of that committee. There is some leeway to the fact that people have lives and may not be able to attend every meeting, and a majority of the appointed people, which is council members and committee members, is a quorum. So as long as you have enough to do business, it's neither here nor there, the alternates piece, as long as the appointees to the committee is what it ought to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, even for a non-voting committee, like the IC, for example, we, it specifically says in the terms of reference yes. there's no vote. Yeah. So what's a quorum? The majority of people appointed. So oh, just a majority? Yeah. Half plus one? Appointed, yeah. But in the case, um, I think it came up with the financial committee, though, where uh, Ron was suggesting rotating council members through. So, therefore, would all council be appointed? They would have to all be appointed no. if the intention I'm is to rotate them all. I've through. rethought my stuff on this. I think to max out horsepower with the residents, uh, we should do that. Uh, I think I should, I mean, it was originally envisaged two. I think I'd go to a third counselor now. And that way, if, as you say, somebody's not there for whatever reason, okay, they yeah. miss their one meeting or two in a row in a jeopardy, but they're usually there for a third. And it, it doesn't invalidate the business if the, if the in the actual meeting, the numbers of counselor, council members and the number of um, appointed committee members are, are not it doesn't invalidate the business, provided that's not happening at every meeting. Because they're, they are the members of the committee. That's right. 
So we are not the members. They you are. are. You're appointed as well. Oh, so we're considered appointed. Yeah. 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 Equal. Yeah. Equal. Yeah. Equal. Yeah. So if there's six, so six counselors, no, three counselors, three residents. So right. what's a quorum? Would be a majority. Okay. So four. Four. So four of anybody. Yeah. yeah. Four. Okay. Yeah. I'm pleased to hear that because I've been, as you all know, questioning the, the legality of what it is. So that's fine because your terms of reference are still Here, be being developed, so, so uh, that's good. Interestingly, specific to the finance, um, um, the CFO tells me that in West Vancouver, all members of council are on the finance committee. That's Same what I've discovered. Yeah. <clears throat> so <clears throat> that said, it's not like our finances are so wide-ranging as West Vancouver's, but I think certainly for me, I think three is probably the right number. Well, particularly if we'd want three residents. Well, we want the three residents, and if we could find a fourth, I'd go find a fourth counselor. Fine. Okay, good. Thanks, Manny. What else? The next one is the one under number six, uh, changing the name of Committee of the Whole. Um, there's no issue doing that as long as we update our procedure bylaw, which we are doing. So later on today, we're talking about that, and you'll see when we address that tonight that I've changed those references. So that? Uh, next is under seven, and it's CAO could assess if council can appoint a community member to the substance abuse working group. I hadn't heard from them until two o'clock this afternoon. Uh, and they said they would be ple normally they would not allow a, a non-elected person to participate on their committee, but they would be absolutely pleased to make an exception for Joanne Ron. In the case of Joanne. Yes. Um, so they need a formal resolution. Uh, if council would like, I can bring that forward tonight. Yeah, let's do that. Um, and the last one was the last bullet under seven, which CAO can discuss doing more research into existing terms of reference. Um, that was with respect to uh, Councillor Hughes' bylaw and policy committee. Um, we haven't been able to touch base on that yet. Okay, but that's uh, in play. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's it from me. Thanks. Um, anyone else? Business arising from the minute. Um, I'm not sure if this is, it would be considered business arising, but one, two, three, fourth paragraph down from page two. So you did have a follow-up meeting. Would that information be included anywhere? Um, well, I did copy you guys on the on the thing, um, the uh, the report out. Um, yeah, no, that no, that was a, that was an internal meeting. Um, it was sort of a, a they provided a, a, you know accident statistics. Well, I mean, you saw what it was. Mm -hmm. There was nothing that uh, no decisions were made, no business arising. What do you say? Yeah, I would say the same. It's really preliminary. You know, we yeah. discussed what we might like to see from them, but they didn't really have any answers for us. They looked at all shell shocked. Yeah, <laughs> yes, they did. I would say if if some of our asks and discussions come back, then that would be an opportunity to provide an update. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, so yeah, there's no report coming out of that other than the one that I made to council, just mm -hmm. to keep you in mind. Anyone else? Okay. Oh, yeah, I do. The Green Can program. Mm -hmm. Does uh, Carl always yes. bear in pizza? I do. Do we get 100? Yes. yes, he does. <laughs> he does. We didn't get 100 calls. We did not. So the, the, bet was <laughs> the bet was that on that Friday morning, yeah. Uh, we'd get at least 100 calls saying, why has my trash not been picked up? Councillor Waters, I like the extension to pizza. I don't, yeah, I don't, remember. <laughs> I don't remember the I pizza I think we part. added that on later. But I'll be happy to do the pizza okay. part as well. Um, yeah. And I'm pleased to report that we had zero calls. Oh. Allegedly. We didn't. we didn't get any. That's great. So congratulations. Thanks a lot, Ruth. <laughs> you want to split the cost with me? <laughs> I think Ruth should be invited. I know. Yeah. Having, having executed that <laughs> so beautifully. Okay, anyone else? Okay, so we're going to move on to unfinished business. Anything? Great, moving on. New business. First item on the agenda is submission to the BC Environmental Assessment Office. Would you like to sit at the table to spread papers? USB stick at the open house by the EA office. Uh, the people, but I ended up you have to report that as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I had printed out all of this in order for just to read the hazards and assess, um, risks and hazards section and the marine transport sections. So last minute uh, confirmation from the BCAO office on the Friday. I was supposed to submit that day. So they gave me an extension to the Tuesday. What to took, uh, was it just the uh, paper were catching they up? They were short staffed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they are. That, that's actually true. Anyway, I, the report is in there and I was here to answer any questions if you like and I can provide you with a bit of update. Um, there is going to be a working group committee meeting for the marine section on March the 9th, I believe it is. Okay, and you're going to handle that? Month, 9th, and I'll be there. Uh, Claire Freighter of Islands Trust, uh, Sandra Basego of District of West Ham are also on the working committee, specifically on the marine portions. And Claire Freighter shared with me her submission, and I'm actually seeing her tomorrow. So we are communicating and sharing concerns. It was interesting to see that even though we independently read material and kind of wrote our own, we came up with a lot of similar concerns. Who else is on the marine section? Well, Sandra Basego is with the District of West Van, yeah. and Bill Sopovich, Councillor Sopovich. Yeah. yeah. Those are the, that's West Van uh, Islands Trust and Lions Bay that spoke up and felt that we should be included. And nobody Bowen else. Bowen Island, uh, the, there's community members that are asking Bowen Island to <coughs> request to be put on to send a representative now, because now that they've woken up and realized what's happening right in front of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, then David Raphael, a planner, senior planner of the Sunshine Coast Regional District, is on the working group committee. Uh, District of Squamish has two representatives from their staff. They actually, Squamish has a working group committee of its that helps to provide information to the two working group members. So they've got quite an extensive review going on. Uh, Squamish Little Rock Regional District has someone on it. And then there's a whole list of agencies, Ministry of Transportation, um, Ministry of Health. So it's a long list. It's in the documents. <clears throat> what's your sense? What, what's, the, what's the general thrust of, of the working group thus far? The working group is busy, as with, you know, everybody is busy. Uh, the, as with Squamish Nation, there are so many applications before each of the participants. Not just environmental assessments, but also local projects. So the amount of time for this amount of documentation for people to read through is, is it, seems to be rushed. So there is, there may be a delay caused by there being this rush, plus we're finding that a lot of the studies that they provided are not adequate, they're not complete. So I, my sense is that there's, I was told already there was 1,100 comments just from working group members to their file. So that's going to take them some time to go through all of those before the next round of meetings. So for them to stick to what their timelines are could be challenging for them. Uh, I also spoke with the uh, manager of the Turnpole uh, Review, which is Transport Canada's own review that we're going to do. And Wood Fiber has delayed their submission to that review until April. So okay, they've chosen the site at Wood Fiber without all of the necessary and complete reports. And adequate information because there's so many questions going back to them, so you know, there's definitely some information missing. Um, under 7322, the desktop and field studies uh, related to marine transport of vessels under 20 meters. I noticed Lions Bay is not mentioned here. Is that because it is in the submission? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lions Bay Marina doesn't show up on one of the maps. <laughs> so there's, I've told them in person at the open houses that, and they know that, they admit that their data gathering for small vessels is not complete. So this will be, not, this will be one of the areas they're going to have to work hard on. I've offered to help. <laughs> uh, not that I really want to help with fire, but actually it helps to build data 
for cumulative effects on yeah. all projects. Because that's the other project that's uh, that's upcoming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cumulative effects side of things is quite interesting. Um, as you know, the province is moving forward with the cumulative effects assessment for how San Jose region, which is, is good news in that. And as well as Squamish Nation are looking at marine use planning, uh, so areas that they want to protect. So this is all going to be happening this year. Well, it makes you the ideal um, sort of uh, uh, bridge between the two as well, because you're so intimately involved in all of them. Yes, very involved. <laughs> um, if you're well, happy with the submission, I didn't have time to run it by anybody before. Just because of the yes, that's the one part. Uh, but if there's anything here that you, uh, you know, going forward, you want more information on, or let me know. Yeah, one, one question I've got seems to be missing out a lot, and, and that's the impact of the marine life. There doesn't seem to be a lot of research being done on it. And then we've got some real protected areas here that I'm thinking with the discharge from the bilge as these things come in and the, and the wave action on the mm -hmm. fragile stuff down below. Yeah. I'm having trouble finding any information on it. Yeah, that would be under the value components. So they list the fish that they care about. Only <laughs> <laughs> pretty ones. Did they actually use it in that context? <laughs> well, yeah, those are uh, you know DFO changed the wording to uh, fish that are, have commercial, recreational, uh, or Aboriginal value. So if none of those fish fit that definition, then they're not. What's a recreational study. fish? Who defines those? Salmon. Cod. DFO. Wow. Oh, as in an uh, recreational angler. Yeah. You're playing with. It's not the fish that's recreational. So the change, <laughs> this, this is what everyone was complaining about with Bill C-38, because that subtle change to the wording <coughs> has meant them that habitat for non-recreational, non-commercial valued fish is no longer of value. Well, how much is value of life? That's why people are upset. <laughs> <laughs> I think Glenn Dennison's talking about yes. the, uh, and that, the boss So that got into my last uh, comment. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's not something that you ever even probably knew about, let alone consider. They don't. Um, however, I did raise it at the Hazard ID workshop. So definitely having participation by people who live here on this working committee, I thank you for appointing these as, and acting on this. Well, it's, a, it's us that's thanking you. Because it's, it's really critical. I have lots of support uh, from the network of people. And so. yeah. the, one, the one thing that I find, uh, and I brought this up at the open houses with the wood fire people, is that there are no safe anchorages in House Sound. The yeah. only possible anchorage is right on top of the biorm, Spongeries, hmm. and right near Defense Islands, which is owned by Squamish Nation. Which are the Defense Islands? I saw that in here. Just north of Anvil. So when you're going north That's here, you've got, you go past Anvil and on the left, just between Anvil and the mainland, you've got those little, little group of islands. Oh, there's two small islands there. Yeah. 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 There's, there's well, they used to park that, that old BC ferry. Close by there. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's a beautiful place. Um, so I did notice. A uh, comment about if you have any questions too about what the province is doing on the cumulative effects and the resolutions, I'm happy to answer questions around that. That's the Jim's next, department at the moment, right? Okay. The next uh, forum is on May 1st. I've sent the invitations out on Bowen Island, so that'll be an update. <laughs> uh, that's for the House Sound Community, community forum. forum, yeah. They elected. Helen and I are going to go to that. Oh. Uh, minimum, uh, maybe more. Sh who should go? Everyone? You know, it's of interest to everybody. It's and you're welcome. Uh, uh, no one else paying for it. <laughs> Lions Bay hosted one last year. Mm. Yeah. It's full, full show. Sure, should we all go? Sure. Yeah. It's a okay, well, that's always good to a work. wonderful uh, experience. And mm. Do we? Uh, who do we RSP to? Well, the dates were uh, the two different dates. So I saw one in April, and that was moved to May. The yeah, it was moved to May first. Okay, May first. May 1st. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they just went ready. From what I understand, from the mayor. Trying to eliminate conflicts. Um, yeah, there's an RSVP. That's me, so I've got it. I've got it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I do um, that voluntarily for. Um, 
Thanks, Ruth. This is great. Thank so, you. next step. Next step is another meet the next meeting for the March meeting. And the, and there won't be a last minute need anymore because uh, now you're, right. you're there's in, a in a sequence. Confidentiality forms. They're mostly concerned about they don't want any of the working documents shared out there. Yeah, well, that was one of the considerations they gave us, and uh, I believe we sort of said, you know, former councillor, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. No, I, I must say the BCAO people at the open houses were, are, are very open <laughs> to hearing, and uh, the senior management, two of the senior senior people were there, and so I was able to speak with them, and that was more rewarding than before. It's a big deal. It's yeah. the biggest deal that we've had in this neck of the woods for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Becca mentioned you may have another ally in West End, Nora Gambioli. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she's quite knowledgeable of what's going on here. She's got a lot of faith in LGBT. Yes. Yes, Nora's great. So Bill Soprovich and Nora are the two appointed to the oh, barn. Okay. And uh, those are in the group. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Ruth. Okay. Thank you. Okay. B, letter to John Weston. Um, Helen, you raised this. Uh, just remind us. I think when I was going through my files, it was um, when we were at that Infrastill Canada meeting, mm -hmm. and he said that if we wanted to, we can ask him for a letter of support. I wasn't even sure what, what that was. Yeah, so what happened there was Manny prepared a schedule on the form that he asked us to fill in, which is really just a spreadsheet, saying what we were doing. That was sent. Um, I suppose, given the fact that the submission is tomorrow, it's gone in. Oh, it has. Went in Friday. Okay. No need for letter of support. Well, we could certainly send it after the fact if, we, if we didn't have it in time. I mean, that's an easy explanation. Would that be helpful? Uh, yeah, I can follow up with John Weston's office to see. I know that Nikki put the request in. Yeah, I mean, the issue is that John Weston's aware of our our issues. Um, he's very supportive. He was. Uh, somewhere between raising an eyebrow and, and interested to, to hear about our water issues. So every, every little bit helps. I got the sense from this meeting and a subsequent one that we attended, or I attended, that it's all pretty ad hoc how they evaluate these things. You know, it doesn't go into a computer and it spits out the winners. It's, they look at the font. You know, it's, it's quite subjective. So letters would be helpful. I'll follow up with Stephanie at John Weston's office. Okay, good. Let's leave it there. Thanks for bringing that up, Helen. Um, early, early years grant. Ron, why don't you kick that one? Uh, thank you. This, uh, if uh, what we can do is, uh, this isn't a rehearsal for tonight, especially since uh, Councillor um, Hughes isn't here. But I'll just go through each of you. I've given you just a, a raft of emails connected in the, in this. So to begin with this, uh, the, let's call it the care team, shall we call them, uh, invited uh, Helen and I went on to their original meeting and let's call it the core group of residents. Uh, um, the issue was do they apply for a, a grant from the province, which has an upside of up to a half million dollars. So uh, to quick give you the quick skinny on this, it's whether upgrade, this is about the uh, early, early years child care, so it's upgrades made to Lions Bay School, the field gym that would be a benefit to both early years and school aged children. Uh, the opportunity is also long term prepayment of rents paid to School District 45. Um, repurposing of a space of Lions Bay School in order to expand early years care to include infant toddler care. Purchasing of an outdoor portable to be used for infant infant toilet care, rebuilding the beach washroom, incorporating second floor multi-purpose space to be used for child care. So the caveat to all this is the draft, uh, the application for the grant needs to be in about 30 days from now. Uh, I believe it's this week the, um, they'll be speaking with the province to flesh things out a bit more. They missed on the first opportunity for a conference call, so they'll do that. The uh, piece here for us is that uh, when you connect the dots of uh, desire for the school to remain operational child care and can we help them, it uh, certainly would be fair to say that the council members would like to connect the dots favorably for this group. The issue for us is that we haven't talked about it uh, in, the, in the open quorum. So as I see this as it stands now, 
Uh, I've asked the child care team to stand down until we can provide them some direction tomorrow, and that's with the, the discussion that we're going to have. Uh, why have you asked them to stand down? I mean, they, uh, they, they need to proceed. It's oh, been they're, they're going on their path, but they, they have some asks of us. So we need to uh, talk about that and, um, and consider the options. So just again to flesh out the stuff here, uh, a former daycare provider in the village has offered to assist them as well. Uh, they feel comfortable in writing the grant themselves. The data is largely theirs. Uh, Mayor Burr has generously given them their insight in a tangible way to assist in uh, some operational costs and speculative stuff. All, all right on the money here because nobody does have the numbers. Uh, this weekend it, uh, I found out that our own uh, building inspector Dave Butler, according to him, has done over 30 portables for Burnaby. He is very familiar with putting uh, portables on school grounds and, and the issues faced there. As an interesting thing, his his first the base number for the uh, portable was thirty thousand dollars. Before you modestly customize it, um, clearly the piece here is for uh, council to consider is where would it go, and how do we fit into this? So the choices are the beach. Uh, the school property, which is currently owned by the school district, and the potential for leasing a corner. The, the, these appear to be the top choices. And so I think they are, the team care is pursuing along this line. So their ask for us is if we would intercede with the school district. Uh, two things. One, they're looking for, uh, a, when they submit their grant, they're looking for a letter of endorsement from the village as well as from the school district. The principal has connected the uh, uh, Julia Liederman on this, so she's aware of what's going on here. So it appears that the school district will lend their support in a, in a high level way. So here's where the rubber hits the road. If the, uh, the care team chooses to uh, put the uh, location at at the school field, the issue for us is how do we support them or do we support them? I'm going to give something off to the CAO in a minute on this. I think that I'm not sure where we go with this. So uh, I think before any of us, because we're members of the community, are speaking with this particular team, that uh, we, the group, need to decide where we would generally like to go. And that's really the purpose of bringing it up so that there's no misinterpretation or misrepresentation or um, they apply for something that likely we would not support. Okay, well, we need to make any decisions uh, tonight. But, um, yeah, I mean, my, my view is that this is a strategic opportunity for Lions Bay. Uh, it's, it's slightly chicken and egg, uh, but it is a build it and they will come thing. The government's prepared to fund up to 90%. Uh, the, the preliminary budget that's been whacked together looks very doable. Here are some of the modular... Megan's just sent this to me. So, uh, so I don't know if you've seen these, so that's, you know, that's it's fairly standard. Here you can... What the heck? I'm an eye club. So I'm not the only one that that happens to you. That was just a slip of the finger. Okay, so that... These, that's a nice one. That's nice. Anyway, so these things are very doable. And uh, um, I will also, uh, once given slightly clearer understanding from them on where they want to go. Sorry, I'll show this to you in a sec. All right, I'll show you now. Oh, I've lost it again. Isn't that nice? Um, Talk to our known educational donors who live on Lions Bay Avenue, who are looking for schooling, childcare, uh, um, that kind of. St they're looking for opportunities to, to donate to education. Thank you, Mayor Burr. Uh, I think here, if I was to, as as a discussion point here, along with there's no decisions here, and I am going to defer to the CAO Coons in a second on, on her thoughts on this, is that the common theme is build at the beach, yes, no. 
that's the one piece we do own. School property, probably around the peripheral of the gravel parking lot. Uh, regrettably, uh, seemingly easy if you plugged it in the middle for the sake of argument, then you're bas basically missing the troika of power, water, waste. So presumably that could be done. The piece is, um, I believe the group would appreciate assistance from the village to get the right result from the school board. And I think that's a bit where the rubber hits the road. And I think uh, C.I.W. Kuntz has a viewpoint on that. Uh, but I'm thinking for us to, to chat about I, uh, other choices of properties that the village owns are non-existent that would work for this. Uh, I suppose we, they, this group could go private enterprise and purchase a property, but probably the price point's out of whack. Not at $500,000. No, no. So I, and I can't see a, a partnership being developed fast enough. So I think we're down to the two choices and to give this group some guidance on this. And I'll defer to CIO Kuntz on, on the piece specific to the, if she has any thoughts on the beach and also her view on the school. I think we really have to hammer down what the asks are specifically um, and where the village actually has purview in this. Because if we're talking about the school land, we don't have any jurisdiction over it. They own it and they pay us property tax. So we can support the endeavor by writing a letter to go with their grant application, but in terms of actually facilitating anything, the village should not be involved in that. Um, it's just we're not in the business of we can certainly promote things in our community that are good for our community, but we're not in the business of child care. I don't think that's a road that we want to go down because of all the things that that entails in terms of um, your regulation of, of your child care facility and all that good stuff. So if we take an active role as being an uh, involved participant, that's a whole different can of worms. I think we can support all the asks that they're making through their grant application, um, if we can help them get you know, competitive insurance rates when they need I mean, I think there are ways for us to help, but I think we have to be very careful about where we're involved from a risk and regulation standpoint. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any doubt there. Uh, you know, if you look through the application requirements, it has to be done by a licensed childcare operator. Well, there's only one of those in the village right now. That's the Play School Society. Uh, they have a number, they have, they have all the things. So it would have to be them. And I think Ron's right. The choice really before us, and, and you're right, we can only facilitate. I already had a preliminary discussion with the school district. They are, they are prepared to bend over backwards to give a nominal lease. I mean, peppercorn rent. Uh, do we use that term here? Peppercorn rent, a dollar a year, type of lease. Um, so the issue is, do we let them take? It's, it's their choice. Um, I already can. We know that the beach would would cost way more than five hundred thousand. You'd have to you'd have to start it again. There would also be problems with that. Idyllic that it might be when nobody else is at the beach and the toddlers are doing what they're doing. But there's fencing. There's other stuff that goes with it that might not be appealing. And to I don't us. think I don't know. But we'd have to decide. <coughs> I don't think we'd want uh, our beach to be used um, um, eight hours a day um, for childcare facility. Well, one of the other issues I'm kind of wondering about regar regarding where you place it is uh, the septic issue. Uh, the system that's at uh, Lions Bay Beach right now, I'm sure, hasn't been designed to take that extra capacity, so we have an add-on. If you took it to the school property, they don't have anything there, so would they have to be looking at alternatives like humus or something? I don't know. Well, the, the, we don't know the capacity, this is their problem, not ours, we don't know the capacity of the existing system at the school, but if I recall from the plans, which I don't have here, it's a pretty big system. So it may be able to, they just put a small force main in and it goes there, or they put a new one in. Or they could do an organic septic system or something like that. It, well, I mean, there's ways around this. The technology is, uh, you know, whatever, that's yeah, whatever. But to the troika, uh, which is the waste, the water, and the power. Well, the power and water are right there. It, that's their issue, which I don't see as an overcome thing. And if you knew where the other stuff was, you could probably connect it. So, yeah. back to the piece here. I think that um, what, uh, and certainly once we have a, had our, well, we're having our discussion now, and we may readdress this again this evening with uh, Councillor Hughes here too, is that probably we could ask this group to attend 
in council chambers for half an hour next week and give them some direction based on our, our discussion here. Well, I'm meeting but, with them tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, for heaven's sake. Um, everybody's busy. Um, to hear what they're up to. Are you coming? Is that for the conference call? Uh, it's no. 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 But that's, I, they don't have the date, but it's right about now. I, I think for me, uh, I, if uh, with the direction that council will be giving you tonight, when we chat it about it again, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. I'm actually quite pleased that, and I think this is going to be a big part of their discussion with you, is the overture to West Vancouver School District. I so, think that's where they're looking. So if you um, if you are, are confident that uh, in your discussion with whomever you spoke to that this mm -hmm. could occur, that probably, uh, this is my view, is probably 90% of their decision making. The rest is now we've got a place, we've got a landlord that's willing to play ball. The rest really is within the child care team. Yep. The village is likely to give a strong endorsement. You've already done this. Uh, by the way, I happen to think that the mayor is the right person to make the overture to um, this because it's a, it's a bigger community issue. Uh, so I think beyond that, they have to go through their grant process and figure out what, the, what it looks like. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. So the other part that I see uh, me being involved in, just like um, when the school needed its $80,000 um, play structure, somebody took on the, the, the role of approaching donors and, and $60,000 check was written. Uh, in this case, what I, what I believe I would be talking about is uh, an endowment to cover operating funds. Um, but we'll see. That's down the road. First, we have to get the thing approved. Well, and their model will show something of it, uh, which I'm, I'm, that's likely not going to be too successful with a lot of red ink showing for the first Well, you know, it does have the benefit that you can just close the doors for certain years. If you don't have enough kids, close the doors. The rent's nothing. So, that, you know, if you can't cover your operating funds, you put it in mothballs. For the village, the school location has two additional benefits. It provides an additional use for Lions Bay Field. It puts a washroom there, and it, it asphalts the parking lot. It actually uh, assists in the daycare's cash flow. It's not the village's building, so whatever nominal rent goes into their operational costs, it can be used for private functions, should the society care to do that. There's a lot of things that could be done with the asset that uh, would be accretive to them. Who would who would own title to the buildings? The school group, didn't they? No. The, the no. child care group, I think. The, the society would own it. Yeah. yeah. Child care would have it. The uh, I mean the, the the land title stuff would show. Yeah, the land show, belongs. Show, it's show, a lease. Show, show the caveat for the dollar a year in <clears throat> perpetuity, whatever it is. But the and but it'll probably uh, the agreement that's reached is, you know, sensible business like care and concern for the property, yada yada yada, kind of thing. Well, the leasehold improvement belongs to somebody. I guess it belongs to the society. It belongs to the society. Sorry, Fred, I interrupted. Oh no, I was just thinking that. Um, to, to a very real way, I think the school district and this council or this community are like arm, arms like our partners in support because we both have the same interest in it. We want to see the attendance increase or at least hold in line space school as does the school. So I think it's an easy sell. Uh, it's, it's almost a no-brainer. It's so, so no-brainer I'm concerned. I mean, it is, it is part of the chicken and egg thing to attract young families to Lions Bay. I mean, we also need to provide housing for them. That's another. That's another issue. But this is one piece. But Mayor Bird, this is only your first step. Oh yes. I mean, now that uh, presuming that um, this evening we uh, confirm a variety of things, and presuming you get some some clear direction marching orders and you represent uh, council to the group, that's fine. Uh, and you. Uh, on behalf of council, confirm the straight line with the school district that this could occur. Um, just as we're doing with the Build Canada, I'm afraid your job is just beginning because the next phone call goes to our worthy uh, representative here to see if we can grease the wheel here to make sure that it stands a better chance. Mm -hmm. And I, I think for the CA, I think we're not out of bounds on any of this, are we? Not so far that I can hear. 
No, I mean, there's nothing wrong with talking to Jordan Sturdy and, and uh, asking for his uh, intercedence because here's why, Jordan. This is why we need it. Mm -hmm. It's particularly important to Lions Bay for all kinds of reasons that he already is quite well aware of because I've bent his ear for hours. So I, I think for me, uh, I mean, I brought it up because there, all of us are participating in little snippets. It's got to get out into the public forum. And uh, now that there, we're getting some traction on this, uh, this evening when we're doing a decision making, we can do that. I, I think everybody kind of gets the drift of the information. Is there any? I think we're good. I think we're good. Done. Strategic plan. Um, I have sent round what I believe to be the latest consensus. I didn't print it out because I didn't, don't intend to discuss it today. I just want to know where we stand. Um, as we know, the impetus for this thing was to provide, as requested, a clear strategic direction for council, you know, we'll stick it up on the wall type of thing, um, so that, that everybody knows what we think we're going to be working on the next slightly undefined period, but something like a year. Where do we stand? I had zero response. So is that a document that's moving towards a strategic decision? Uh, no. No, I wouldn't say there's any decisions involved. It's what we want to work on. So that's setting strategies? Yeah, yeah. It's so a strategy that, session. List. Yeah. yeah. So that should probably come to the table at some point. But there's no resolution. Oh, I guess we can resolve to adopt it. You need it. to be able to show when you make a when you make a when you adopt it how you came. How, you need to be able to show on the record how you came to that. Lots of emails. Ne next meeting, I'm sure we can deal with this in a N next uh, next strategic meeting. Let's well, because we want to um, uh, bring these things uh, along fast. Let's nail that document down because it's now mid February. Let's nail that document down at the next, what next are we, time uh, committee of the whole, uh, uh, what do we call it, strategy committee. Council strategy committee. This is, uh, I know this is dear to your heart, Mayor Brewer. I personally don't have a problem with doing a special meeting to do this. No, there's no hurry. There's no, there's no yeah. need for that kind of hurry. Uh, we've got enough to be, well, we do have enough to be working on with budget and, and the IMP, uh, RFQ and all that stuff. So. No, I, well, unless you tell me. There was a reason for us to meet for, and I can't pick what it would be before our next scheduled meetings, and then we could probably bring this as a piece of it. So now, discussion of this in, in public forum would be premature, because we're, mo we're just throwing ideas out there. Some of them are bad ideas. Do we close that meeting? We can close that meeting. On what grounds? Uh, there's a piece in, the, in Section 90, I believe, about... Provisions of a service that are early in their days and early discussion. Uh, yeah, yeah section K. I, I, I looked at that. Negotiations and discussions respecting the proposed provision of a municipal service that are a preliminary stage and that are uh, expected to harm in. Yeah, okay, K. I suppose it would work. It's not really a service, but. So, and the other, the other piece of that is about um, meetings and minutes and um, basically. Anything that is a material part of moving council's decision along the spectrum of decision making needs to be done in a formal meeting. Yeah, so I think that we will, whether we do it special or not, we can talk about that tonight if you like. Um, we will do it in future, we'll do it in strategy committee. 48 hours notice, right? Uh, 24. 24 hours notice, uh, minutes, motion to close, discuss, report out, all that stuff. If I can make a request that we make the, our notice to ourselves longer than the 24 hours, because the last <laughs> meeting we had was so rushed that, uh, uh, quite frankly, it went in one way or not the other of mine. I, I don't really feel like it was that much of a benefit. It helped, but I think we could be more productive if we all went in there well prepared for it. Absolutely. Well, there's some pretty good input, I thought. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so, so yes is the answer. So what I would suggest without asking for a decision uh, yet, today, now, is that we we spend a bit of time at, at our next strategy committee doing that. Strategic planning? Sorry. Yeah, strategic planning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nope. We'll put that in the next so are we going to have a special meeting or no? We'll just no, bring I'd this forward in two weeks' time. In our, in two weeks time. Yeah. That's my suggestion anyway. And have, a, have, I, have like a redo? So, yeah, okay, so we'll... <laughs> re, a redo. We don't have to resolve anything, right? That's no. just... But there's no decisions yeah, to be made, no correct? No, no, we'll just... We'll put that on the agenda for next time. Okay. Okay, that's all I needed there.
Um, corporate sponsorship, Ron. Thank you, Mayor Burr. Um, uh, in a um, high-level discussion meeting with the as background to the other council members, uh, in high-level uh, budget discussions uh, specific to do with the community groups uh, when they put forward their, their asks for financial support this year, it uh, came out uh, that some of the groups have financial support from, from corporate sponsors. Um, have had, may attract, and as we saw even at our last council meeting, uh, one came out of the blue, and there we go. So I was somewhat cognizant of this when I was approached by a resident acting on behalf of a corporate entity who um, is interested in having a, a more strategic partnership with the village, shall we say. I suspect this is a uh, uh, penetration of our, of our resident base, but they get, they're going to get something out of it too. But I'd be when uh, further details are known, probably next not tonight, but the next meeting, I'll probably come forward with what those details are. But it actually got me thinking about other stuff uh, where we, uh, all of us, have some form of corporate connections. And should, like, say, uh, hypothetically, say we could call the can it be uh, Whistler Water Library in Lions Bay or something like that? If they wanted to write a check in for whatever it is, uh, who would solicit this? How would we do this? Uh, you were uh, just in the last topic, you were talking about other potential corporate donors, too. Uh, I'm not trying to create any bureaucracy here, I'm just really kind of thinking about a little guidance whether this is something, and we all have lots on our plate now, that we may want to make a, an initiative or a thrust um, in the second half of the year where we do this and target individuals. And if we do, then I truly do defer to CAO Kuntz for guidance on this one. I don't know what the rules are about the municipality soliciting corporate sponsorships, so that we'll need some looking into. That said, I don't know why we couldn't potentially team up our volunteer groups with potential corporate sponsors and have facilitate those discussions, but kind of stay in the third person. Well, which is really one of the things I'm thinking of here, because uh, if uh, council does not want to embark on a, let's call it a top-down initiative, where we really are targeting uh, and I'm just, uh, as Mayor Bruno, since he signs the majority of the checks, is probably a common theme for 10 s suppliers uh, that certainly could be approached ourselves. And again, I'd suggest even if, if uh, council members think they don't have connections, if they thought about it, they undoubtedly do. So the piece here is that if we at the top of the house don't want to pursue this, then do we just make referrals to the community groups? So it's really I'm popping this up for discussion. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I think there's two opportunities here. The, the one is where it's, it's for a community group, and maybe we can connect them. The other is, the other is do we go out and solicit corporate sponsorships of the municipality uh, without knowing if it's even feasible? Mm -hmm. If somebody came to us and said, we would like to sponsor the hall and we'd like to be called these, uh, the, t the TELUS Hall, just like any municipal facility, um, I guess we'd have to do that on, a, on an ad hoc basis and see what it is. Well, I don't even know if we can do that. You know, uh, Rogers Arena is, is a private facility. It doesn't, uh, it's not owned by the city of Vancouver, as far as I know. SFU names halls. Okay, so uh, they are very much government. Uh, I don't know But those are donors, not sponsors. Uh, donors. Well, okay, so now we're I don't a, know. a fine line in the taxation equation here, so I'm not, I'm not even proposing to go there. <coughs> but maybe there's a distinction. I don't know. I mean, for, have to do some work on for example, uh, uh, we could donors or sponsors. Uh, there may be a resident participation that's desired for the uh, the beach washrooms. Don't know, but I mean, it's no different than the library or potentially a barbecue area at the back here, or even the stairs down to the creek um, or the playing field. Uh, there, certainly, uh, the the thoughts are. They're, they're broad, and they benefit the community. Well, I'm all for new sources of revenue, as you know. Whether this is a feasible one, I don't know. But uh, 
you know, as a matter of principle, I would say, at least as far as I'm concerned, uh, that Lions Bay is is open to revenue ideas, whether they be development, donor, sponsorship, anything. We'll listen. I, for me, I just I I, I would be prepared to table a discussion and leave this with uh, CA. CAO Kuntz and the administration team for a couple of months. I mean, we all have lots on our plate right now, yeah. uh, but to revisit this in a more formal way, if the um, corporate entity uh, does approach me um, shortly, I will certainly air this out and council can make a call then. Yeah, that's an ad hoc opportunity. Maybe we have yeah. to make a decision. So I don't know. But I, I thought it was worthwhile to, to bring it up because, you know, as you say, it's a it's a revenue opportunity that uh, goes right into likely a capital asset. Yeah, uh, Mandy, do you want to just take that uh, under advisement and keep your ears to the ground for a while? See, I mean, you know, now that you know that, that, that you know, there's an opportunity for us to say yes to something like this, maybe there'll be a seminar or something. Um, yeah, we'd have to tread carefully there. You know, do well, we want to name this the Telus? Well, or, uh, I mean, you're, we're, we're uh, to your point. Now we're benchmarking. What's the cost of a chair? What's the cost of a bench? What's the cost of a barbecue? The naming rights and stuff like that. Just don't know. Don't know. Don't know either. I don't know how municipalities do it. I can find out. Yeah, but it's definitely worth finding out some more. Yeah, I like it. Um, okay. Uh, if this was a go, I'd be happy to. Uh, take this as a piece. Well, it fits in that. your portfolio, yeah, so. Well, yeah. I, yeah, it, I mean, I've done considerable work with the boards that I've done, so. In general, I mean, you know, I see our, our new sources of revenue as things like uh, DCCs, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, co pays on a you know, new sewage plant to, to build a something, mm -hmm. condo facility somewhere in some new piece. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. but. We'll consider anything. I believe that uh, the village is um, shimmering in the light of change, and people <laughs> want to, people want to be associated with a positive thing, and I think there's a very good opportunity here for us. Okay, good. Thanks. Anything else? Uh, now, this was. I, I'm just gonna. Can I ask a question that's not on the agenda? I'll ask it tonight. Because I think it's a tonight thing anyway. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, the new business part of the agenda. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to reopen existing pieces? No? Okay, moving on. Public questions and comments? <laughs> uh, motion to adjourn? No motions. Oh, no, TW. oh, thank you. Oh, this committee. It is a committee, it's right? A, well, in our existing procedure bylaw, it says a motion to adjourn. Will not be made in the COTW. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just to be that. difficult. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Yeah. I'm already dead. Welcome back, Sean. <laughs> Welcome back, Sean. <laughs> no. Sit up straight now. <laughs> <laughs>